This episode of Talk Tall to Me is being simulcast in the future in April of 2119. Set your solar thrusters to maximum. Ask the artificially intelligent aquaponics system to run subprogram Gamma Gamma Alpha 9 and set the interstellar stasis chambers to confetti cake mode. Because this was, is, and always will be Talk Tall to Me. I'm Omen Sade. And I am Nick McGill. Together we are Feckless Momes, and together we are charting the undiscovered celestial spaces of the discography of Jethro Tull. Every single star and every single track. It is an astral exploration for us to decipher the meaning behind every song that we can in chronological and spatial order. This week, we are talking about Nothing is Easy. Track 6 off the CD or track 1 off of side B off of Stand Up. Yeah, let's give them a little taste. This song is... Mm. I, I feel... If I actually went to the gym, this would be a workout song. Yes, I believe that you would work out to this song, Nick. There is an energy to this song. There is a, a, a push, a drive in this song. Yeah, yeah, there is. You'd really do a lot of step-ups onto, onto the aerobics bar. I would Pilates the hell out of this song. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's amazing. I I have okay, a couple of different things about this thing. Yeah, fair. I feel like this sound that they are creating, that the four of them are creating at this moment, is is like what this was would have sounded like if conditions had been better. Sure. Like if they had all really been on the same page, if they had had the experience and the confidence of this album at that point, I think that this is that sound that, that there was a little bit of in in this was. That that kind of rollicking forward driving motion. But in this example, mm. it is so tight, but not held back either. It is a solid rock and roll song. It is rock and roll. I might have to push back. I posit that we wouldn't have Nothing Is Easy if we didn't have This Was in its entirety. Oh, no, certainly. But I, I, you know, I do feel like, I feel like Ian Anderson was reaching back to that sound. Mm, sure. Whereas, you know, the last couple of tracks that we've heard off of this album, they're, 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 they're moving forward with a lot of experimentation. You know, Beret is on there. Yeah. Look into the sun is like a new sound. Sure. This this is a little bit of it's a little bit of that more of that very early Jethro Tull sound, but but now upgraded with everyone on the same page with Martin Barr just killing it. And you know, it's funny, there are there there are a number of sections where Martin Barr and Ian Anderson are kind of trading back on the flute and the electric guitar. Yeah. And it is so natural and it's so there's so much real complicity. They almost sound like they're, you know, they're they're one entity. Whereas it never sounded like that with um with Mick Abrams. Yeah. They tried to cre- they tried to create that experience, but it it never really clicked. He looked back and saw what really worked in this was. Yeah. And omitted that that blues sound, really. That's right. It's not really bluesy. Yeah. But it's got that but it's got that same drive. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they this was those songs that were were rock, that were reminiscent of rock. It was always rock with that overlay of blues, a feeling of like, look, we can we can do 
blues in the rock style, and we can do rock in the blues style. Totally. Totally, totally. Now they're doing rock in the Jethro Tull style. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was really good. That would that would oh, be perfect you. right up there. Um Yeah, they really they really embraced it and it feels like they're they just kind of let go. There was there's a level of abandon and it proves that you can you can take off the training wheels and these guys are solid. Yeah, yeah. It, it's abandoned, but it's not it's not being out of control. Yeah. They are all totally at this point they've mastered what they are doing with their instruments with each other to me this is the sound which is the result of touring mm. and specifically this song i think that the style of playing on this song and the kind of structure of this song was born out of their live performances because it has it has so much of that like outdoor stadium festival feel it's an opener it's it's you walk on stage and you start with this song. Yeah, absolutely. Boom, the energy level is is through the roof. Yeah. And everybody's bouncing and jumping and and feeling it even if they've never heard this song before. Like you can't help but move to this song. Well, and I mean that's a great that's an interesting idea of having it be an opener because th- what this song also in this recording of it at least gives you the opportunity to do is introduce each of the musicians. Yes. Within that second part of it, you know, there's it's funny. There's sort of like part A of this song is the lyrics section, mm-hmm. and then this, and then like part B, which is maybe sixty percent of the song. Yeah, I forgot it was so substantial. I forgot as well. And yeah, even when we heard that first little drum solo, I was like, "Oh yeah, there's that drum solo." Oh wait a minute, there's so much more. But then when they start going into that, bow, 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 bow. It's victorious. It's it's showing yeah. off. It's like, it yeah, is. we've got this timing down. We're pushing the energy. Right. But even though we just went for a minute and a half, two minutes of what feels almost off the rails. Right. We are we are in tune. Exactly. Exactly. We actually have this. Yeah. It's so tight. Yeah. And then Clive Bunker has a drum solo. Glenn McCormick has such a sweet bass solo. Glenn Cornick. No, no, me. Glenn Cornick, Glenn McCormick, <laughs> the the Spice Guy, right? <laughs> yeah, Glenn Cornick has that sweet, sweet bass solo. Ian Anderson gets his flute in there, and Martin Barr has. I mean, it's like it's like a pizza quattro stagione. I mean, I was gonna say that. I didn't think you'd understand it, though. I'm glad you brought it up. It's like you. It's like it's a whole pizza. It is a unit. It is und- it is indivisible. Well, it's not because then you cut it off and eat it. But it is a it is a, it is a singular being with four distinct sections of flavor. Sure, but they but t- together they they are pizza. Together they are this amazing pizza. That's the title of the biography that I'm writing for Jethro Tull. This amazing pizza. Together they are pizza. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And I really, I really hear the, I really hear the performance aspect in this. Yeah. I mean, I really, like we've talked before in episodes about Ian Anderson being a, um, a showman, maybe, maybe without even being able to help it in terms of his performance on stage. Yeah. Unintentionally almost. Yeah. And I pathologically, and I can <laughs> unmedicatedly a performer. And I think that terminally, and I think that, um, <laughs> and I think that. This, I can just imagine him going bonkers on this song. Oh, yeah. Those flute hits, the the call and, and response from across the stage, like, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is, I feel, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, this feels like one of the first really solid instances of Ian holding his own with rock flute. You know, I, yeah, I think it might be because of the rest of the album the songs that we've heard thus far on the album i mean a little bit on a new day yesterday Mm. a little experimentally well not even yet with beret no in terms of like rock and roll flute yeah 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 it feels it feels just accompaniment all of the other songs where it's been there it feels accompaniment it feels like it's leading here in certain spots yes it's yes exactly and it's (gasps) 
I found the cap of my <laughs> seltzer water bottle. Yes, and I feel like I feel like they have really come into their own in terms of a style with this song. This that's like so dis- that's so like classically. <laughs> you spilled your seltzer detail. in the last episode, so they're gonna take a week <laughs> to have that denouement. There's gonna be no closure for a week. <laughs> you know, we're just like we're just like George Lucas. Oh dear lord. Whew. There's something else that I want to I'm curious about. I'm curious to get your perspective on this, Nick. Sure. Okay. The lyrics of this song are I was hoping we'd go there, yeah. We oh oh we're going there. The lyrics of this oh, song we are, there. Are, are really different from previous Jethro Tull songs in a way. The meter is different. They're much shorter lines yeah. in a way that are that are strung together in a faster way mm-hmm. and it's it, we you know we can talk about the themes and and everything but the my specific question is about kind of the second half of this of the last stanza there're two they're basically two there're two verses in this song if you will in the second mm. half of the second one so if you're alone and you're down to the bone just give us a play you'll smile in a while and discover that I'll get you happy my way is this an instance of ian anderson speaking directly to the listener and preaching preaching the gospel of music and himself in a way music and i think abstinence from substances really I think so. I'll get you happy my way. You don't need drugs. Listen to Jethro Tull. I think that was a Nancy Reagan quote, right? Just say no. Listen to Jethro Tull. Right. Right. When life is feeling dull, don't pop a bunch of pulls. Listen to Jethro Tull. She listened to Jethro Tull. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't really fit on a bumper sticker, but. Well, cars were bigger back then. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know if I buy that this is specifically an abstinence song. Yeah. No, no, no. I know that's a stretch. I 100% acknowledge that's a stretch. But yes, this is direct ad- addressing of the audience for sure. Which I, I, th- this kind of is blowing my mind. I don't know if there are, I don't know if I can think of any other examples thus far in their discography, in their, in their songography that have that element to it. I don't think so. I can't, I certainly can't think of one off the top of my head. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's almost almost self promotional in a sense. It's also so generous. It's really literally like describing the human experience and how to mitigate it, you know, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so interesting, like, because I mean, even the previous song was like sort of like in the fullness of time I was able to look back and realize that there are some important lessons that I learned from this terrible thing that hurt me all these years ago. Yeah. And this is like and this is like more kind of zen like in the moment right now you can have these you can discover if you know that things are not bad if you relax even though there are all these all these difficult things. Yeah. Even even though nothing is easy. It's like nothing nothing is easy. Enjoy life. Nothing is easy. Yeah, it's life is crap, sure. It's crap for everybody. But there are ways to to take your your mind off of it. Relax and listen to some dope music. Listen to some 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 Jethro freaking tall. I think this I didn't put the two together until I I made the comment earlier as this being an opener song. Yeah. What better way to end your opening song than say, hey, sit down and listen and enjoy yourself, basically. Yeah, it's so funny. Oh, my. It's. It's the clown in Shakespeare. (laughs) It's Puck. In in the sense, it's like it's the prologue. It's it's directly talking to the audience, saying, sit down, shut up and enjoy yourself. He's addressing the groundlings. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's, it's a little bit of, uh, which is, which is funny then because it's not actually the beginning of the album. No, right, yeah, yeah, but it, it works better in my head if, if they were opening 
a concert with this song. Totally, totally. I wonder if they ever did. I I would certainly hope so. But that being said, it it is it we just assuming you finish side one and go to side two or what is it A and B? Ooh! You come down, you mellow out with "Look Into the Sun." You flip it over, and bam! You 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 get that burst of energy with this. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah, it's not so effective to go from like in the middle. It's not of so CD. effective listening to the MP3s. Yeah, right, right, right. And it's so funny because it's like. What I think is so genius about this is that, like, okay, so you've just literally flipped the record over and placed it down. Or maybe you're listening for for the first time and you start on side B. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, that's something you can do if you're a weirdo. Stop listening right now. You know, you put the needle on, it starts playing, and it says, yeah, give give me a play. Give this record a play. And especially because at least half of the songs on side A are pretty gosh darn depressing when you think about their content you know (laughs) they're definitely more mellow than this yeah it's my girlfriend broke up with me or all we can do is look into the sun and think about the songs and this one is i don't know at this point thinking about the structure of that album this one feels almost tongue-in-cheek like saying like yeah i sung about some some crummy stuff and sure we all deal with this garbage right but I mean, you're listening to Jethro Tull right now, so you've got it made. Right. Take a load off. Yeah. Do you feel as though that long instrumental break goes over into jam band land at all? I don't have a whole lot of experience with jam bands, per se. That is as it should be. Right. Yeah. I have maybe tertiary experience with jam bands at best. But to me, and, and I, I'm speaking strictly from my experience, so I, I don't have a wide uh, range to, to cultivate a, an opinion. But right. to me, jam band is, has less structure. You know, it, it feels like it's, it's a lot more amorphous and flowy and liquid. Whereas, yeah, these guys are like really rocking out and jamming, but it feels like there's, there's a constrained path that they're going on here i agree i think that this i think i like what you said about the the structured nature of this song this song structurally is like is like a picasso in the sense that like sure on first listen maybe it just is bold colors and shapes but then but then when you really look at it it does it it has internal structure it's supported in such a way that you can really appreciate and be moved by and taken by those flashes of red or the, that that sudden blue object that comes out of nowhere yeah there is technique and there is purpose behind everything it's so playful yeah yeah but it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel pseudo playful it doesn't feel playful for the sake of trying to feel playful no it feels like these it feels like these four musicians who are really who are, have really started to master their form and their instruments and gotten to really know each other are playing with each other in in the in the most real and fun way. Fun is the key word there, I think. It's so exciting. I love this song so much. I, I forgot how much I like this song. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. Not to say that all of the rest have been dry toast up until this point. No, not at all. This one feels the most like they're like they're just having fun this was a fun song to record yeah well and it is nice to listen to because it doesn't it's not it's not that the message is any less important than look into the sun or back to the family for instance but it's so it's so positive Mm -hmm. it makes it makes me feel good to listen to it yeah in a in a really energizing way it's very it's very energizing. It's inspiring. It's positive and inspiring, but it's it's still it's still there's still a level of of grounded, like re- acceptance of reality there. Oh yeah, it's not it's not sugar pop. Yeah. If this song were a serial, a 
breakfast cereal. Sugar Pop. Sugar Pop made me think of breakfast cereal. Sugar Smacks. Oh, right. If this song was a breakfast cereal. If this song was a breakfast cereal. Can we say if it was a breakfast? Okay, sure. Sure. Or if breakfast cereal is too hard, you could tell me, like, what kind of... You don't have to give me a brand. You could create your own breakfast cereal. You could create the nothing is easy O's or whatever. <laughs> All right. If this song was a breakfast cereal, yeah, it would be extremely nutritious. Okay. It would probably ha- have ancient grains in it. Okay. But, like... Not like, oh, we found these nice ancient grains. It's like, these are the grains that allowed civilization to actually live. It's not like wheat. It's like, it's like hump grass or whatever it is. <laughs> is that... I don't know. I don't know that much about ancient grains. But it's like, it's like the things that people survived on and were like, you know what? Elder Horatio got eaten by a saber-toothed cat, but... At least we have this pudding. Those kind of grains. I may be mixing time periods here a little bit. And then there are just like some, some like the, the most zingy, like handberry fruits, maybe semi-dried so that their sugars concentrate even more. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you can't, you got to have dried fruit in a cereal. You can't have, unless you're adding that by hand. Like, Well, I think in addition to all that, I think that, that probably this cereal you know, you pour it or you scoop it and then like a magical goat busts through the door and milks itself into your bowl and then like stampedes out and ruins your rug. But but it's like it it is it is fresh. It is fresh, unhomogenized. <laughs> the, the imagery you painted that goat picture so well. Elixir. It milks itself. Oh thank you. <laughs> and then busts out your door, ruining your carpet. That Yeah, it does. And you're still, and then you eat it, and you're like, worth it. This is totally worth it. So what's the flavor profile? Is it just kind of that that kind of weedy, grainy with the addition of the berries? Or is it is there like a little, is there a honey? Is there a, a spice? It's fresh. It's fresh and earthy. It's fresh and earthy and zingy. The fat content from the magical goat milk is just like it's got a high <laughs> off the charts. It's got a high lac. What is it? Lact. La- what is the sugar that's in milk? Lactase. Lactase. It is lactase delicious. <laughs> that's the that's the slogan that's on the box. <laughs> yep. This cereal can't be boxed. No, it could be. It could be. <laughs> Comes in a pouch. <laughs> they sell it. They sell it in pouches. Mm-hmm. Well, that was, Mm. that was a good, that sounds really good. I I would eat the hell out of that cereal. It sounds really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing is easy. Nothing is great. Grain. Graining is easy. Uh, Nothing is grainy. (laughs) Uh, Ancient is grainy. (laughs) Nothing is as easy as eating this cereal. Well, that's the slogan, but what's the cereal called? (laughs) Um... Oh, let's go to our source text. What's the source text? Oh, from the the lyrics. Okay. I was like, what is the source text to that that madman fever dream that you just went on for 15 minutes? (laughs) I think think that the name of the serial is Worse Things Happen. Oh, okay. I'm not sure the the marketing department would like that, but... Or maybe it's um, Happy My Way. There you go. I like that a lot. Oh, great. I like that a lot because it sounds like a really bad translation from like some Slavic language. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it is Slavic. That's why it's that's why it's goat milk. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. What else do we? I mean, I feel like for as complex as this song is, it's it's quite straightforward. It is when you really stop to think about it you can really recognize those rails that we mentioned. We can, you can recognize that structure and it's just guiding you through the song. Yes. But in a way that's, it's like a good roller coaster in the sense that like it's, it is on its tracks, 
but you can't tell where the tracks are going. Yeah. It takes unexpected turns when you're not when you're not ready for it, giving you that kind of thrill. Yeah, I certainly didn't want to imply that being on rails was a bad thing. No, 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 not at all. But but just in terms of the, I was thinking about the structure and like, I feel like with with for instance, I keep comparing it to looking at the sun because we listened to it last week. But even or with a lot of the with a lot of the previous Jethro Tull songs, you kind of like once you understand what the structure is, then it's like okay, yes, then it's it's this is the structure it's repeated yeah and with this it's it's just you don't know from one moment to the next the structure keeps developing it's more it's more complex it's a more complex structure yeah well i mean i think it certainly speaks to that the fact that when we were listening to it we were surprised by this song 100 percent. we who have listened to this song yeah however many times when we finally sat down to listen to it it, it really surprised us yeah it's so cool it's so fresh. It's that's the thing I keep coming back to. It's so it's got such a freshness to it. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's it's zesty. It is zesty AF. Yeah. It's almost almost like a refreshing surge. Oh, no. I think that's a good place to end. <laughs> With a refreshing surge. I was going to say surge cola, but it's not actually a cola. It's a surge, surge drink. Okay, so that... Was it supposed to have more caffeine in it? Oh, I don't know. What am I thinking of? There's one that was like over... That was like highly caffeinated. There was another... Jolt? Are you thinking Jolt? Jolt? Yeah. Maybe Jolt is the one that was test demoed in our market that was a cola i dr- i drank that was a cola i've only drank those once in my life i drank two of them and it, it didn't go well because i also had a giant pixie stick at the same time oh my god it didn't go well we'll just say it didn't go well oh my all the sugar twice the caffeine <laughs> is their slogan <laughs> All the sugar, twice the caffeine. That is literally their sw- their sw- their slogan. Yep, <laughs> it's the initial terrible. slogan. Sorry, <gasps> for twenty four years, and then they changed it to maximum caffeine, more power. Does it still exist? Yeah, it does. Oh, that, that's dear like, God. that's like saying extra arsenic and plenty of cancer. <laughs> it's yeah, like, like you're not naming good things. <laughs> All the sugar, twice the caffeine. <laughs> But this is this is also not a localized thing. It is it's it's in Ireland. It's in Australia and Sweden. Well, now it is. Oh, you're saying? I think it was. You're saying when it started? I think I'm saying that. It was created in 1985. It's as old as we are. Yeah, yeah. It took them that long to pass FDA regulations. Well, yeah, that wraps up uh, Nothing Is Easy. And we are moving on to a very fun song. Yeah, what are we listening to uh, next week? Some rock and bongos and our first instance of mandolin, main, mainstream mandolin, really in general rock, much less in, in this album. And what's it called? Fat Man. There's no reason to be mean. What's the song called, Nick? Corpulent Fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited about that song. I love it. In the meantime... Do you have any recommendations for our listeners, Nick, as to what they should do while they're waiting for us to talk tall to them again? Well, I know it's general, generally believed that nothing is easy, but there is one thing that is easy, and that's giving us five stars. That is easy. And leaving a review, a rating, even subscribing, all really easy. I mean, technology has made things a lot easier since 1969. Yes. So until we get back in a week, don't forget to let the parakeet out. I'm Omen Said. And I'm Nick McGill. And we are Feckless Momes. And this has been Talk Tall to Me. (laughs) 
This ends the future simulcast of Talk Talk to Me. Stasis Pods opening now. Talk Tall to Me is a proud member of the Feckless Momes Audio Network.